Okay, so in a previous video you saw I'd got this motor that I got from Timu and I've got these two metal bars as well and that was to make this 3D printed sander that I've got the bits to make here. Now this was a, a design by Cut Transform Glue. If you want these STLs you're going to need to uh, subscribe to his patron and get them that way but I think these are really cool anyway so I'm going to make it today. So what do we need? Well um, I've got a flange thing which is to connect this the sanding wheel to the motor. I've got one of these switches. Yep, simple little switch there. And I've got this kit which has got some DC connectors which I'm going to use to uh, plug into this. I think the DC thing will fit in the back there. And then we'll wire it up and I've got my little power pack here. Let's see whether it works with that. You've seen this before. This is my 12 volt power supply made from smoke machine cells. Now these motors, they've got a little red bit there. So I'm assuming that's the positive and that's the negative. To be honest, I'm a bit scared using these cells to do this. I've got a feeling they're not going to be really capable of that. And I don't want to set fire to anything, but let's just try that. Let's see whether this works. Scary. Oh, Oh man, that made me jump. That's a... Yeah, so it does do it. I can put this in here and just see the amount of power that's being pulled out of this. That should work. So I've got 12.29 volts on there. And you see that? Yeah. And let's try and plug that in. Oh, no. Did you see that completely took this out? I think this motor's too powerful for these cells. Maybe if I had a bank of more of them, but the fact that that turned that off, I'm a bit scared of this. So I'm going to have to find something else. All right. Now, one of the things that I bought for this was this little flange to connect it on. And um, the idea was that I was going to take this cog off and then connect this flange to it. Now, I couldn't get that cog off. Put something underneath it, tried to prise it and I couldn't do it. So if you look at that, you see this cog is a little bit worn down. And what I found on eBay is that you could buy bigger flanges. And so I bought the biggest one, I could, which I think that was about an 8mm one. And this was 8.6, this cog, I think, something like that anyway. What I've done is powered this up another way and get that spinning and put a grinding wheel against it. One of these, this little grindstone, and I didn't have it spinning, uh, but this was spinning. And then I moved this across and it wore down that cog a little bit, enough for me to fit that on there. And then the two little grub screws, I can tighten up and have the motor on there like that. So that's what I'm going to use to connect the motor. And it's quite useful. If you order one of these and it doesn't have a cog on, then you can get smaller ones which hopefully you'll be able to go on there and hopefully be able to send to that up. So what else have we got? We've got these two bits. So I need to clean this up a little bit. I've got some of these screws, just uh, it didn't matter that they were hex screws. They just happened to be in the pack I bought. They're countersink, so I'm going to have to countersink these holes. I noticed as well that there's three holes and I only bought two of these bars. Once I've got this all assembled, I'm going to be able to put this in, measure this, see maybe whether I have to cut one of these in half. Maybe just the, the two I've got will work. We'll have to see what happens with that. Get that into here. Can I do that? No. So these are a little bit too small. These are, okay, they're about, about 8 mil, just under 8 mil there. Now I seem to remember when I made my 3DR 3D printer, the guy sent me some of these pre-made and he said, be careful if you're using these with a power drill. And I think what happens, because these are PLA, as you spin this, it heats up the PLA so you don't get a good cut. So I'm going to have to be really careful with this as I'm cutting. There's a thing that I don't want to do is heat this up too much. So I'll make sure this is going slow. That'll, I can make that go quite slowly. And I'm just going to let this almost slice into this if I can. I would never, ever do this like this. I'd never hold this if this was metal. It's a good way of slicing your hand apart. But hopefully we'll be all right as long as I brace it by doing this. 
I'm almost letting it just chisel itself out, just cutting as opposed to drilling. Let's try now. So let's do it that way. See whether that will go through. Yeah, just about. So I'll use a uh, Adam Savage little soft face hammer for this. Okay, so that's that's through there. I think I'll clean up that hole a bit more. I'll go through it a little bit more with the drill and do the others and then come back to this. Some of these holes were a little bit off, um, but that's just because I had a layer shift in the printer. I've gone through and again, quite slowly, I've just countersunk those so that these should fit in okay. They should go against these holes here. Don't want these to be too long because I don't want it to foul the motor on the inside. But some slightly smaller ones. Now, is that going to be too short? No, I think that's good. All right, let's pop this in. Lovely. All right, so that's that's pretty firm in there. That's great. Okay, so the next part is going to be that part. I'll get this aligned up. So let's pop these in. in. All right, well, it's a bit, um, a little bit wobbly, but I think I probably need to just sand this bottom bit off. So I'll do that off camera at some point. So then there's the switch. So the switch should go in here. Yeah, I don't want to push it in too far in case it doesn't come out, but that's good. So there's the switch. And then I could have wires hanging out of this. I've decided to use one of these as well and then that might be a good idea I can put this on some of my other power things just standard barrel connector there so that should fit through there if I pop those on I've got to find some way to tighten this should be able to yeah all right so I can tighten that not there through that that's clever it's a nice design this before I tighten that up let's have a look so I can easily connect that to there I could connect it like that once I push these together. But it's got to go through this switch as well, has not it? If I push that switch in there, I've just had a thought. Can you see this here? The, the negative wire is connected directly to that. So if that's pushed in there, let's just try this. If that's in there, and then this comes in at the side, there's the chance that that's going to touch that. I maybe have to switch the negative in this just to make sure that that doesn't short on there. We'll have to see what happens, whether it does or not. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut these down. I think I'm going to cut these down really a lot so that there's no way that these will touch because I don't want it to be a dead short because exciting sparks might happen. All right, let's cut that down. All right, there you go. So I've cut those down. I've just put some soldering points on it and I've soldered a wire onto it as well. So I'm hoping that once I solder the other black wire onto this, um, these aren't going to touch. I've tinned these. I've cut them a little bit shorter. So I put the washer on first, make sure it goes over the black as well. Tighten that up. All right, so I can solder the switch on there now. What I really don't want is this to be a loose connection because, you know, this could be taking a lot of power. In fact, I think it will be. OK, so that's on nice and firmly. Let's put a bit of captain around it. Gives me a little bit of peace of mind that I'm going to be able to turn this off. I mean, the worst thing that will happen if it stayed on was that I'd unplug it because it's a barrel connector. But I'd rather um, something that might be spinning at high revolution i'd rather that be something that i could turn off in a controlled manner and not at panic there we go okay and then i should be able to solder this all right so now it's it's sticking these on you know my, my 3d printer it's not it's not fantastic i'm going to cut some acrylic ones of this and here it is. So that's cut fine. Uh, what I need to do is just countersunk these holes. But let's just check it first. Yeah, that's worked. That looks like that will fit. And this one, 
as I would have expected really, wouldn't I, that that was going to be about the same. So I've got to drill some holes in this. So let's see if I get this here. I think these holes don't have to be that accurate, but I've got to get them in the centre. So if I if I do that there and that there, then I can go out this way. Not the most accurate, but I think I'm safe in this. So I want the hole to be about the middle of that. It's almost at the edge there. So if I just go down here, I probably need to countersink these before I drill them, but drill it there and there. So counter punch, countersink them. I'll get that done and then we should be able to get those screws in no problem. There we go, those holes should be fine there. Pop that one in and pop that one in. And that'd be like so. That's looking good. Right, that's worked well. Just clean that off. There we go, so that looks good. Now let's uh, do the same thing for this. Um, so I've drilled these out and I've countersunk them. So these should all be the same. I think I've got some, uh, I've got some thread lock somewhere. Where is it? Oh dear, just realized I've been, uh, had to look at something on the corner of the screen there all the way through it. I wonder how long that's been on there. I hope I've not ruined my footage. This has been zoomed in a little bit through throughout this. That's why I've probably already told you in post. Um, but some little thread lock there. This is spinning fast. I don't want these uh, flying off. Let's connect them in. So now I need to get some sandpaper and put it on here. Double-sided sticky tape. So let's uh, let's work on putting these on. If I go through the centre first, I suppose the thing is on this is not letting it overlap, getting it as close as possible. I mean, it doesn't matter if they're not touching, I suppose, but. Uh, as close as I can and the bits on the edge are the bits I don't want lifting off so these have got to be the best bits as good as I can make them anyway if I cut that bit across I might be able to reuse that for the other side maybe yeah on there make sure this is all well stuck myself a little bit of grit or something underneath there let's cut that out before I get the sticky stuff on hopefully that's got it don't think there's any others then I can go around here briefly and uh, let's just again before I've taken the backing off let's just get some of it off so it doesn't uh, catch and peel off take the backing off Maybe I can get the corner bit there if I use this and don't waste any. They're yeah, not good for the scissors, but these are cheap scissors. To the perspex, that should give a better outside edge now. Connect those up, that should just go on, and then the Allen key that came with it. Just do a little half turn there and a half turn the other side and another half turn. Just want to pinch both sides up equally if I can. And that should go in there too. Right, so that should go close to there but not touch it. It's not wonderfully uh, straight, so what I think I'm going to have to do is adjust that to make it work a bit better. Now, how am I going to power it? Well, I've made this, which is something you should never do with mains electricity, put a power plug on both ends. And I've got one of these as well. And guess where I've put it? 
Du, 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 du. Yeah, this should be the Jaws music, shouldn't it? It's Spider Lipo back. Yeah, I found a, I found an application for Spider Lipo. This, uh, this should be much better for being able to cope with this. So, we've got eleven and a half volts in here. All of the batteries, they're not below three point two, so they're okay. I'm going to charge this up soon as well. Fifty three percent, it says. And what I really hope now, as long as I've not got a short. I plug that into there. This is the scary bit, and I plug this into there. I'll check that it's turned off. And all right, okay. So it seems safe. Well, it doesn't. It seems terrifying, but uh, I've got eyeglasses on here, by the way, because if anything breaks off, this it's going to hit me right in the face. So I've got some uh, eye protection on. So you can't beat a little sanding stick when you want something to sand. And I'm really hoping this isn't going to go off. Um, I'm hoping that this battery is enough to be able to cope with power in this as well. So now the big moment, will it turn on? Yeah. So it works a bit wobbly. I say I'll have to sort that out afterwards, but it's looking good. So that's just uh, gone into power saving mode. It's not turned off. So if I uh, put this here now and take a coffee stick, let's see how good this is. Oh, <laughs> well, it goes down there a little bit, but... Uh, I think if I if I did it the other way, that would uh, sort that out. Yeah. So lovely little design there, cut transform glue. Thank you for that. And I hope spider fans that you enjoyed this. If you did, please thumbs up or even subscribe. So all that remains to say is bye. Wow, I cleaned the dust off this earlier. This isn't half dusty. It really, really eats wood and it sends dust everywhere. So maybe another project at another time is to uh, get some dust extraction for this.